Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Balin, and this is Ender.io. Today I'm going to be taking you a little bit behind the scenes, and we're going to take a look at some of the more overlooked but more useful item of buffers. So at first glance, this looks like a really big mess, and some of you might be right. It can be. Uh, so <laughs> what we're going to be covering today is going to be the power buffer, the item buffer, as well as the Omni buffer, which is kind of a combination of the two. So first, let's cover the simpler of the two, the item buffer. Now, the item buffer, uh, as I have here, simple recipe, right? Some electrical steel, iron, and a chest of some sort. You open it up, and it has an interface in here. It is very similar to a hopper. A hopper will only have about five blocks and is uh, unoffable by redstone, whereas an item buffer is also allowable, but you can always do always active, active with signal, active without signal, never active, etc. So it gives you a few more options, plus it gives you about four more slots, and you can configure it to push and pull on any side that you want. You don't have to worry about it only going to the left or right, or down below like a hopper does. So you can use this in a lot of different ways. So it's a much more improved and customizable hopper. Uh, is the best way to say it. And as you can see here, I currently have a conduit connector attached to it. You can set things up uh, along with that on, on any of the multiple sides. You can just leave it on, set on its default. You don't even have to have it do a, a, a pull or a push or both or even disabled if you don't uh, want to, and it will just keep a standard setting. Now, moving on from that, we've got the power buffer, which might be confused with something like this, a basic capacitor bank, which uh, a basic capacitor bank may have, you know, some power storage, a bunch of uh, input or output settings that you can have, and turn it on and off. You can configure it for the, uh, the where it connects and stuff as well in a very similar fashion. Now when you click on here, you, you get kind of the same thing, and it, I only have a basic capacitor in here. You notice a capacitor bank doesn't have capacitors, those are made up of them. Now, a power buffer is made of electrical steel, iron, and an industrial machine chassis, making it a little bit more expensive. And at first, like I said, it's probably not necessarily what you want, uh, but if you want more batteries or more power storage, a capacitor, a basic capacitor bank or, or above is going to be a better item. If you want to just be able to buffer something, then this is probably going to be a better uh, item. And I will explain why it's going to be better momentarily. First, let's go over how it works. Now, a power buffer, uh, like a capacitor bank, will actually give you the option to limit the in or out, depending upon the capacitor ratings. So right now I've got in here a base capacitor put in there, I, and I, I turned this to be what I wanted it to be. It can be as high as 2500 uh, for the uh, uh, power value. You can put in a double layer in there and it'll go up to 7500. With a basic capacitor bank you also get a, a hundred thousand. Uh, in this case it's 300,000. And then if we go with the Octodic it's going to be uh, half a million and 22500, which is, is kind of crazy. You don't really need that much, especially if it's just a power buffer, unless you're going something really big that you need to buffer specifically. But it will give you the different options of turning redstone on and off and so on, plus the configuring just like you would a capacitor bank. So it doesn't have as big of a storage capacity as a capacitor bank, but it will work better once you combine it with other blocks. So first, uh, if I may, if to, to give an example of how this is best used in my mind at least, this here is currently set up to have its maximum amount 2500 power coming in, 200 going out. And each of these smelters are set up with octadic, are, are going to be set up with octadic banks. There we go. So each one is going to require 100 power each. And I'm, the reason I'm using power is because it's fairly universal. Forge power, uh, RF, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, micro infinity, it's all the same. So they all have this. They're all going to require 100 power each. Uh, on each of these ones to smelt. Just right now it's set up for all smelting and I've got a bunch of gold in there. So it's going to require a max, a total of 400 power units to be coming into these units for them to all run at maximum efficiency, right? Well, in this case, let's say that, oops, I just put in one of these uh, <laughs> octodicks in here, but let's say that in this case, I don't want to just get overflowed with these things sucking up power from, I don't know, some other project I have off on the side here. I only can dedicate a maximum of 200 to this setup, but I want them all to potentially be running if I need it to be. So that's where this comes in. You can use it in this kind of scenario where if I flick this lever, 
some power comes in and then it will start smelting these up and you notice that the they are running on zero basically at this point so they are still processing as best they can with the limited uh, power input that they're getting now you can reduce it even further there we go it's now 20 so these are just really going to be struggling at this point uh, of course they are still octadic so each one is going to get their own little uh, feeding of <laughs> some power that's barely going to kind of feed these things. So it's just going to trickle in. But that's the idea behind a power buffer, and it, it's similar in fashion to an item buffer. Now, if you take the two together, you can make yourself an omni buffer, and this is where it actually works really good. The the both of them really, but the power buffer specifically, because when you combine them together, you get both in the same block. So let's get rid of these two. Let's get rid of this. And in fact, let's get rid of this. We're going to put down the Omni buffer. And in this one, it is going to have the uh, availability, same as before. You know, it's going to have, you know, 100 uh, plus you could have the, uh, what, what is it for this one? There we go. Uh, it's 300,000 and then 500,000 for the Octodic. It's all the same for uh, each of the machines for the storage capacities. And it'll have the same in and outs as the regular power buffer. But you have both in the same block which is what Ender I.O. is really renowned for. It's, it's just really good for kind of compacting everything. If you notice here, I have uh, item conduits as well as vibrant uh, power conduits going to each one. You don't have to have them all going necessarily in and out, but uh, there are a lot of benefits to this with you can have, therefore, your uh, item inputs coming into this block at the same time, and therefore you don't have to have everything uh, going out like uh, you have a quarry block let's say here that's connecting into this and going in and therefore it's feeding into those and limiting the power availability we could just bring it down to, to 25 max output so these aren't going to get as much power as they potentially could uh, from it but it it will allow things to work so it's it's just a simple little setup those three blocks together can help reduce uh, your footprint which I know can get really large when you get into a lot of Ender I.O. And it can help kind of, you know, buffer the amount of power that you have going in and out uh, of this setup. So we've... Oh, my, my capacitor bank is empty. Sorry. Let, let me grab another capacitor bank here. Get a regular basic capacitor bank. Let's just drop this one down here. There we go. And it should be able to feed in. Once I turn that on, there we go. And it's full up. And then it's just going to trickle the power as before into this stuff, as well as it can now, uh, you know, if I have a chest, grab one of these, set it up at the front, and then I could uh, grab more of the gold that I was having fed in via, let's let's just say, uh, a bunch of quarries and stuff, can all be feeding into this. It's extracting, always active. And there we go, and it's going to go into this, which needs to be inserting always active and done. And then all the gold gets fed into this, which then gets fed into each of the respective different smelters, which is great. Uh, so you now have, you know, compacted yourself a few things and you have a little bit of a power buffer at the same time and you can limit the amount that goes into each of these ones so you don't have massive amounts going around and you don't have to have uh, your basic power center or core of your base being spread around in multiple places. Instead, this just can store a little bit for you and distribute it as you'd like. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit by bit on some of the behind the scenes buffer magic that there is in uh, Ender IO. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to others. I think that they'll enjoy this kind of content too. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.